Good morning, traders. My name's Aaron Hill, and welcome to the next issue of Technical Talk. Today is the 31st of January, and time is now 8.49 a.m. GMT. So overnight, Tokyo's close witnessed Japan's Nikkei 225 jump more than 1%, and in Australia, the ASX 200 was down by 0.2%. Now, as for South Korean markets, um, they kept their doors closed in observance of a bank holiday. Forgive me, but I'm not going to even try and pronounce the, the title of the holiday. But nevertheless, markets were closed. So in Europe, European cash equity markets are on the front foot across the board, clearly taking a lead from US markets on Friday. Right now, the FTSE 100 out of London is, is up by 0.4%. The Germany's DAX is up one spot, 4%. France's CAC 40 is up, uh, up by 1%. And uh, Euro stocks, uh, the Euro stocks 50 is up by one spot, 4%. Just really quickly, the crypto space is also is currently underwater, uh, major cryptocurrencies. Uh, so the Bitcoin against the US dollar is down by two spot, 2%. Uh, Ethereum against the US dollar is down 3%. Uh, Litecoin against the dollar is down uh, nearly 6%. And uh, also Ripple against the dollar is also down by uh, uh, nearly 6%. And in terms of currencies, so we're seeing risk-sensitive currencies underpin this morning. So the, we have the Aussie dollar higher across the board. Uh, the Aussie US dollar is currently up by nearly 1%, currently trading at 70.52. And also New Zealand, New Zealand dollar pairs are also higher across the board. Uh, the New Zealand dollar, New Zealand against the US dollar is currently up by spots, a zero spot 7% and currently trades at 65.82. And with this, unsurprisingly, um, safe haven currencies are, are on the ropes, uh, namely the Swiss franc and Japanese yen. So all in all, a pretty much a pretty much risk on environment to kick, kick off the final trading day of the month. So for anyone following our social media posts, or, or you'll likely recognize the chart or the charts on the screen. Uh, the upper, upper panel is the S&P 500, uh, with the lower panel housing the, uh, the VIX. Now, do bear, bear in mind, these are both on the daily timeframes. Just for anyone aware, unaware of what the VIX is, actually represents. Um, its title is, is actually the CBO or, or CBOE volatility index or, or just VIX for short uh, and is a real-time market index representing the um, is a real-time market index representing the market's expectations for volatility over the next coming uh, over the coming 30 days. Uh, but just be aware that the value you see here is actually an annualized number. So what that means is, um, <clears throat> so in order to actually receive the 30 day of value, you would have to, you would have to divide the annualized this value here by the square root of 12 or, or approximately 3.64. Anyway, as you can see, I've applied the Bollinger Band indicator to the uh, to to measure the volatility moves on the VIX, and the VIX recently punched to a high of around forty, not around a you know just just a whisker shy of forty, and this was the and um, a level not seen since I believe around late twenty twenty, so yeah, November twenty twenty. But the key point to note here is we have closed below the two standard deviation here. And um, uh, the upper two standard deviation, I'm, I should have said, uh, uh, of the Bollinger Band, which tells us that the VIX may actually revert to the mean at this point here. So the mean in terms of the Bollinger Band is the 20-day SMA. So with this, we we usually see the, as you can see, I've marked off prior previous um, previous uh, uh, occurrences uh, of this, uh, we usually see the VIX revert to the mean and the S&P 500 form a bottom and generally uh, try, uh, attempt to uh, voyage to higher levels. 
Uh, you can see that a bottom is in the process of forming on the S&P 500. <clears throat> Uh, all we need now is a push higher. So with that, I am going to be closely watching the 200-day simple moving average here, currently circling at 4.435. So a close above here would give, would aid confirmation that the bulls are looking to take the will. Another chart I, I thought should be highlighted is, um, is the euro dollar. So as you can see on the higher time frames, this is the weekly time frame and this is the daily time frame. So as you can see on the weekly time frame, we did punch lower from a key resistance level at 1473, 1583. And last week's close was quite dramatic at 1.7% lower. So with this in mind, we do have some, according to the technical chart presented here on the weekly scale, we do have some room to push lower as you know, it pushed as far south as causing mother support coming in at 0778. With this in mind, we did, did also take out a quasi motor support at, let me just find the value for you, at 1213. Now, this is actually now uh, a, a potential resistance. So with this support now removed, we could be looking at this prime support at 0941110. Uh, so do keep an eye out for this level. Overall, though, we do have a bearish bias on the bigger picture. Now, with that being said, in keeping with the bearish uh, uh, bias um, out of the higher time frames, the H1 decision point, as you can see, this is the H1 time frame here, the H1 decision point at 12.07, 11.94, represents a key base um, this week, uh, joined by a number, as you can see, joined by a number of, of additional technical uh, 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 tools for uh, the 38.2 percent Fibonacci retracement at 11.94, the 100 percent Fibonacci projection at 11.80, uh, 11.90. Excuse me. Now, do bear in mind the 100 percent Fibonacci projection does actually represent an AB equals CD uh, bearish pattern, so do keep that in mind. And finally, we have the 112 figure uh, converging with the decision point. Not only this, we also note that. From the H4 time frame, we have a resistance area at 12.05, 12.30. Now, this H1 decision point is glued to the lower edge of this H4 resistance area. In addition to this, we also have the H4 resistance level at 11.93 at this point here. And that comes in at just above the just above the 100% Fibonacci projection and just below the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement on the H1. So this area is really something I'm going to be closely watching. Um, a pull back into this area and a follow through to the downside could be you know it could be something to uh, keep on the watch list. Uh, one final chart I, I really wanted to to highlight this morning is the uh, U.S. dollar index. Now this is a geometric average weighted um, uh, a geometric a geometric weighted average uh, value of, of the uh, of the dollar's value against the against six uh, international currencies uh, bear in mind the euro actually um, actually works with the largest weight here at 50 around 58 percent so the main point I, I I really wanted to get across this morning is should we bounce from this support at this point here at um, 96.89 or, or, or even the quasi-mother resistance turn support at 96.40, this would, would underpin a, a bullish bias on the uh, dollar and, and consequently weigh on the um, weigh on the um, weigh on the, uh, uh, the euro dollars uh, value. So yes, so just, just keep that in mind. Um, and that's really it. That's all, all I have to show for this morning. Uh, so as I said, that's it from the research team. Um, any questions or comments, please feel free to email the research team at market analyst at, um, at uh, market analyst at fpmarkets.com uh, or alternatively the support desk at um, support at fpmarkets.com. Thanks for joining guys. Have a fantastic Monday and an even better week ahead. And I will see you all again on Friday morning.